we will now begin the opening ceremony by inviting our guest speakers, beginning with the principal of Esbjerg Gymnasium, Mr. Henrik Bobabek. Dear participants of the Espagare Gymnasium Model United Nations 2014, I'm happy to be able to welcome you all to this year's Model UN Conference in Denmark, held at Espagare Gymnasium, or HF, but opened here at the beautiful New Carlsberg Bibliothek. This year, a special welcome goes to public diplomacy and communicators advisor of the UN City Copenhagen, Ms. Eva Esbo Hansen, to the French Ambassador in Copenhagen, Mr. Francois Simaray, and to our guests from abroad, Yuboklu High School, Turkey, Gymnasium Klosterschule, Germany, International School, Groningen, Netherlands, Lauderoid Education Complex, Romania, Leibniz Gymnasium, Bad Svartau, Germany, Malmö Borgerskola, Sweden, Northfields International High School, Mauritius, Oberschule zum Dom, Germany, Thomas Mann Schule, Germany, and Williams School from Ireland. A warm welcome also to our guests from Denmark, Birgerød Gymnasium, Copenhagen International School, Helsingør Gymnasium, Iges Brande Gymnasium, Lyngby Gymnasium, Nyborg Gymnasium, Nørre Gymnasium, Rungsted Gymnasium og Røsesten Gymnasium. And last but not least, welcome to all the students and teachers of Esbjerg Gymnasium og HF, who have worked so hard in order to make this 2014 Model UN an extraordinary experience for all of us. Let me, stay, uh, let me start by saying thank you to all for participating in this Model UN. I'm thrilled and I'm proud to see that so many young students from all over the world have chosen to spend time experiencing the importance of the United Nations by participating in this uh, Model UN. I guess a lot of you have asked yourself, what is a Model UN? Probably you have all found your own answers uh, to this question and thereby your own reasons for participating. If I were to answer, I would say that the Model UN is one of the uh, one of uh, UN's best investments. To understand this answer, we will have to remind ourselves why we have the UN. The United Nations started as a wish for worldwide peace by 51 countries in the end of the Second World War. They were ready to do whatever possible to prevent the terrifying consequences of yet another world war. That is why the, they united their nations in the common work for friendly relations among nations, for social progress, for better global living standards, and for human rights. As these are the key issues for peace and has been the goal uh, for the United Nations ever since the formation back in 1945. Since then, 142 nations has joined the UN, making the total number of members 193 today. At the moment, the work the UN is defined in eight goals, the Millennium Development Goals. And these goals are to eradicate extreme poverty and hunger, achieve universal primary education, promote gender equality and empower women, reduce child mortality, to improve maternal health, to combat HIV, AIDS, malaria and other diseases, to ensure environment sustainability and to develop a global partnership for development. You can easily convince yourself that these are very serious challenges. Still, enormous progress has been made towards achieving these goals. Global poverty continues to decline, 
more children than ever are attending primary school, child deaths have dropped convincingly, and investments in fighting malaria and AIDS have saved millions. These results are good news, but we still have to remind, uh, or we just have to remind ourselves of the conflicts in Syria, the Central African Republic, and Ukraine, for instance, to realize that we still have a long way to go in the effort for world peace. Why is it that we still have international conflicts if we have worked together since 1945 to avoid them? Though this is a complex question, many people are ready to give you their answer. These answers will probably point out other nations, other religions, or other political observations as the main problem. As easy as we find the advantages in our own beliefs, we find the disadvantages in others. If we are not able to overrule our own interests in order to strengthen other people's interests, it will be impossible to achieve the goals of the UN. Exactly the lack of ability to overrule own interests is maybe the United Nations' greatest challenge. The success of the UN builds on mutual understanding of the differences that are between nations. If we cannot understand and tolerate these differences, we cannot solve the difficult task within the United Nations. So, mutual understanding and tolerance is essential and need much more attention on the global scene if we are to accomplish more UN results faster. And how do we do that? How to obtain mutual understanding and tolerance? Well, I'm happy to say that the model United Nations addresses this challenge in a very powerful way, since you're not only here to understand the importance of the United Nations work, you're also here to make new international friendships. That is why this year's model United Nations, this year's model United Nations at Espagaya Gymnasium HOF will be a building full of people with open minds that are here for the purpose of having a good time and making friends with other young peoples from all over the world. And along with all these international friendships that you are making these days, comes new international understanding and tolerance. In other words, by becoming friends, you are building the foundation for many great UN achievements in the future. That is why the Model UN is one of the UN's best investments. And that is why I, on behalf of the world, would like to thank you all for participating. I hope you'll have a great conference here in Denmark. Thank you. <laughs>